All right, guys, like I said, it's a super busy day today. Uh, number four is in the chair, and we're getting ready to roll. Virginia Couch is here. She is running for um, House Representative for District 18. Um, she's got a little bit less on the line today than um, most of my other interviews. They're all primaries that are running. But it is August 6th for um, the primary elections for this seat, and then there's a bunch of uh, general election stuff that we need to get done on August 6th as well, so make sure you get out there and do that. But we get to talk about things that are going to happen in November instead of things that are happening today with Miss Virginia Couch. So here we go. All right, Virginia, thanks for coming. Um, Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm, I'm um, not that I don't like you here. I wish I would have had a few more primary people here today um, trying to get the primaries out. But I'll put a, we'll put a pin in you and you'll come back post-primary when we, when we know who your opponent is and, and talk more about that kind of stuff right there. But I always start off with everybody as give me the bio, give me the, the mini bio of how you got to where you're sitting right now without the actual drive time um, <laughs> and then how you got to the politics side of who you are well i grew up in southeast kentucky okay. on a farm and uh, quickly learned my father was a school teacher and a baptist preacher my mom stayed at home uh, took care of four kids until she was 12 and i realized that a uh, family struggle and one of the ways that my parents taught us to get out of that was to pursue education, which I did, going to Lincoln Memorial University in Harrogate okay. for a couple of years and then transferring down to UT for my undergrad. I was not a successful first-time college student. Um, there were too many distractions. I hear that. And so um, I uh, switched over and went into manufacturing. Okay. I did manufacturing for about eight years. Uh, if there's one thing people who have been in manufacturing know is there's a glass ceiling um, if you don't have a degree. So mm -hmm. I finally realized to get, I needed to go back to college, which I did. Spent uh, Had about a year left and took a business law class that made me interested in uh, law school, okay. which I then went to law school. And now I've been practicing law 20 years. 20 years. What particular, what, what, what avenue of law? Mostly business. I do a lot of, uh, for the f first 15 years, business transactions, helping with real estate, buying and selling businesses and assets. Right. Uh, six years ago, I switched to the Trust Company of Tennessee. Uh -huh. I'm in-house counsel for them, oversee their real estate department, and work with their estate administration and right. trust department. I want to ask a question about that, but I want you to tell me why you got into politics first, and then I'll come back into the trust company part of the conversation. Well, <clears> about <throat> 10 years ago, I had an opportunity to buy a small business, um, which I did during the last big recession in 2009. And uh, I went through a lot getting that business successful. It took me almost three years to realize a profit. And then, you know, it's taken a long time to, for it to be successful. And so I realized that as a lawyer, I had a huge advantage. I was able to do a lot of research on my own, uh, but a lot of small businesses can't do that. And last fall, I saw a little advertisement on Facebook that a friend of mine had put up advertising a little academy that the Tennessee Bar Association does to promote attorneys' involvement in politics. Because no matter what people think, there's not a lot, a lot of lawyers in our le Tennessee legislature. Okay. I was going to say, in general, I would think there's a lot. But yep, but there's for, really for not. For the more local version, I get what you're saying. Okay. Yep. So they have a program that uh, you apply for, and they select 20 Republican, female, you know, Democrat, they're, it's it's a diverse group, and train them on what it takes to run a campaign. Huh. And all the offices that are available. And all that was new to me. I had never been involved in politics other than talking at work about what I'm unhappy about um, and talking about friends, about what we would do if we had right. control. Yeah, that's what this podcast really is, but so <laughs> go ahead. And so um, when I went to that academy, I thought, well, maybe in a year or two, uh, I'm older, maybe that's something I'll do when I slow down. And uh, then I came back and realized that no Democrat had put up a petition to run against Martin Daniel, mm -hmm. who is the Republican that holds the seat currently. And so people kept pushing me, and I said, hmm, I think I'm still a couple of years out. But right. after talking with a lot of people, and then Bill Lee made a little announcement in February, I'm a big proponent of women's rights, including health care rights. Spent a lot of time with Jane and, talking about some of that stuff uh, for sure. 
and that is what finally triggered it i said okay enough right um yeah that was um some of that was eye-opening i didn't know a lot of the history of that um and i say this all the time everybody that's been listening to all the interviews today i apologize this will be the fourth time you've heard it we are proud of the fact that we don't know what we're doing um we think that's we think that some of the questions we will be asking will be questions that people ask because they don't know any better and i'm one of those people and so like i I, i'm always curious about the process how people get to where they are the actual process of doing this stuff the petition and all that kind of stuff is very interesting to me as well as as who you are um you know like i mentioned off air and everybody already knows we had virginia oster or virginia oster (laughs) it's number four today people relax um uh, gina oster was my first official interview ever um, and then we had Eddie Manis about a week and a half ago, and those are the Republicans running in the primary that is August 6th. For those of you that care which one you get to choose from, you need to go out and pick them this week. And then the winner of that will be going up against uh, Virginia here. And, um, you know, I, uh, one of the things, like, if we hadn't started doing this, I don't think I'd have realized it was a Thursday election, yes. which is well, weird. Everybody thinks Tuesday. Right. But apparently it's not that weird because it's always, this one's always a Thursday election. For the primary. Right. And then for all the general, because there's a ton of general yes. on it, which is huge to me because I'm, we make a big push of trying to pay more attention to local because like you're a good Your example. Your commission. Right. You're a good example as well because when I had Gina on, um, I didn't know anything about her. And so it's like, I want to I've now since intentionally stopped researching people a lot. Um, but as I was trying to research her, there was nothing. There was her web page, her Facebook page. Um, Compass Knox had an article about her, but I wasn't a subscriber at the time. And WVLT had like a 300 word. Gina's running against Eddie. Bo, whoever wins that's running against Virginia. And that was it. And I was like, how can we not have more information on these people? This yes. is a big deal. This is stuff. And, you know, and and that's kind of what the genesis was. And I got to have Jesse Mayshark on, and he was fantastic. And I've since subscribed to that. We, as a, as a podcast, subscribe to Come Snox, and I encourage everybody else out to do that because it's going to be a much more sane version of what we're doing here, a little <laughs> bit more straightforward and, and, and better research than we are. But the idea is to get information about local candidates that isn't as easily accessible as I think it should be. Um, and so failure to be there is where I'm jumping in and maybe we can make a business out of it. Maybe it's just a hobby right now. My, uh, um, my, uh, tax attorney, if you will, basically said, you can't really do anything as a business until you start collecting money. Um, the IRS just going to call you a hobby for now. And it's like, well, I want to write off all these things that I'm paying for for doing this. I don't know why not. I, I can write it off as a loss anyway. Um, so that's a big deal to us. And so like, um, you know, I think that's really neat. I didn't know that thing existed as far as hey you know there's not a lot of legal minds in the local system and i it makes sense to have that there i mean obviously when you get up to federal level stuff you always talk about most of those if they've ever had a real job in their life it was it was a lot of them have been lawyers and and um small or businessmen we got this guy now but anyway um (laughs) and i can sit here in front of you and say i didn't vote for him i didn't vote for her either um i voted for gary johnson i always argue as a libertarian um I think that uh, the two-party system has failed me as a constituent, and I think it's going to continue to do so. Um, I don't disrespect that you run as a Democrat, and I absolutely do. I, I love the idea that um, I'm tired of this being a given. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, as long as there's a platform with it, as long as it's not just, mm-hmm. well, they, let, make them choose something. Well, you got to have something for the other choice, too. Don't just put your Damon thing. And and, and, um, and so I, 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 I applaud you for taking the effort for 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 stepping in a little sooner than you wanted to, per se, um, to get it going. And so um, one of the things I've talked about with the other two um, is, is schools. I understand um, that, you know, it's a little bit weird because the seat doesn't do a lot with schools mm-hmm. directly. There's always a budget. Budget's everything. Um, and budget's probably the most important thing logically and stuff like that. Um, but it's always school stuff. Um, it's always kind of the first thing I've come up with for everybody. And so actually, no time out. I want to go back because I put a pin in the trust thing. I want to do that before I forget. Okay. Um, so talking to Jesse and talking about you and we were, he was kind of more lining up like more uh, pundit style as far as like these are the competitions, these are the things and, and these are the factors that make people um, do stuff. And so if I understood Jesse correctly, um, the owner of the trust company, uh, I, I forgot her name and I apologize. But she is a very prominent Republican donor around town. Absolutely. Um, Sharon Price. Sharon Price, thank you. So does she have any, does, does that, has that had any conflict for you? Or has she been pretty on board with you doing this? Is she supporting you as far as uh, financially as well as maybe vocally? Or is that just kind of your personal life, my personal life, and go from there? I think she is a supporter of us doing um, what we feel makes as a better person and giving back to our community she's a huge supporter of community involvement okay this is my path for that 
Um, she is a Republican supporter, and I think she's re- supported one of the Republican candidates now. Right. Um, if you pull up uh, the chair, the contributions. Uh, so she's she's encouraging me to grow as a person. Okay. So and then I mean, I just it's it just a curiosity, just because it's like. I mean that's a weird dynamic. You don't usually. I mean, I, I, would, I would think that's that's not normal. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. And because of, I, I went to her before I pulled a petition. I mm-hmm. went to her and asked if it would cause a conflict because I absolutely love working for the trust company. I plan on working there for a long time, and I would not have pursued the position if she had have said that she thought it would be a conflict. Oh, okay, I understand. And so, that, again, that's why I want to jump back mm-hmm. on that one before I forgot about Absolutely. it. Because I thought, I think it's an interesting little tidbit on, 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 on the conversation. <laughs> it's not it's not important per se, but it's 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 something that's there. Um, and I think it's something that, um, if nothing else, that, it, that, that lends credence to the idea that even though this person who you work for and you've known for years is, is on the other side of the aisle, for lack of a better word, that... Um, that they're not just trying to squash for the sake of squashing. And that's Absolutely one of the things not. that I think one of the problems that rolls around is that there's this, um, there's this us first them. It's like, I'm, I'm the blue team. You're the red team. You're wrong. I'm the red team. You're the blue team. You're wrong. And, and, and that, that I like that. The more, the more mm-hmm. that I see the, yeah, but again, like I said, I, I argue as a libertarian. So both of you guys are wrong as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> um, but not even that it's that, uh, I don't know. For me, I think that's one of the things that's missing is that there's this assumption um, there's the automatic, you know, we've had it in a number of different bills going on right now. Like something gets something gets introduced to the floor, and um, just because it's fresh on my mind, and I was talking to uh, Jane George about it, you know, uh, a Democrat put it up, so Massey said no. Absolutely. And it was something that may have been gone through a time before, and last time it went through, it was a Republican that put the same thing up. Like we had the the federal, what was that, the federal law enforcement change bill, and they both had ones almost identical. There were some major differences, but. Your party put it right. up. My party put it up, so we like this version. Mm-hmm. Your party put it up, so I hate that version. And it's like, well, we could tweak them, and they're the same. Let's mm-hmm. let's work together here. And I thought that was the point. Um, so going back to the the school part, which is where I diverted. Um, you know, what are your thoughts on this seat's impact on what we can do for our schools? Well, I think obviously we want to fight for fully funded public education i mean that's what everybody's soundbite is right but my like i said my father was a school teacher my mother was a school teacher for 20 something year almost 30 years my sister's been uh, teaching eighth grade math for 28 years she's got one year left to before she retires what i hear is it's not just about funding public schools it's about helping the children before they get to the classroom if we are not feeding our children, if we are not giving them a safe environment at home, how, how can they come to school and learn? Right. It's one thing for the, this, the teachers need supplies. The teachers need to be paid well. The teachers need to be qualified. The schools need to be safe. We need to have a good physical, physically safe environment. Right. But we need the children to be prepared to come to class and learn. Okay. So, um I, this is one of those that um, I'm more traditionally a Republican, um, but even as a libertarian, it's like, okay, I mean, I can get behind the premise of that, mm-hmm. but how do we do that? How, what's the, what are the steps that get us to, you know, um, you know, both financially trying to figure out how we pay for it, but also like, what are the activities that need to be done? Cause you know, um, I thought about like, I actually didn't, we went and picked up some of the paperwork when they were, when they were trying to get the out of school thing working and stuff like that. And I went and picked up a big packet cause I didn't want to print it all off at home. Um, and they're like, you need lunches. And I was like, no, you know, and I thought they did a pretty good job of trying to just shoving that all together in a short period of time and stuff like they that. Did. And I think it's, it's, it's a real bummer that, that there's a need, that there's a hard Absolutely. need for a lot of kids out there. Um, and so the how, I guess, is the first one, both financially and just program wise. Um, how do we get there? Well, I think how is we have to admit that there are people out there who are hungry. Right. And so it's not enough for charity. You have some wonderful charities in town that try to provide backpack for children so that they can take it home and right. they have food over the weekend. On, um, my mom's super big on the uh, Mission of Hope. She Absolutely. Does, she does that thing every year. She drives up to Kentucky and does right. that whole mess. Um when uh and, and she's been very involved in that and it's a very okay um it's a very you know i think it's a very cool little charity to, to that that happens um right. but so th- again you're we're acknowledging you know it's not it's not enough we can't just depend on private charity mm-hmm. private charities public charities yes. whatever either one is. um 
Well, I mean, the public charity would be yeah. the state, but anyway. Exactly. Uh, so we need to. Is it is it a matter of trying to like get everybody to work together at the same end and let you know let some of these mission hope style places do their part and then kind of conjoining another group that does another part and then maybe having the state fill in the last part. That would work, but I think what we need to do first is figure out a way for the families not to need the help. That's a good. Uh, that's a better you know, answer. <laughs> <laughs> because, and I'm not. I'm, I'm a Democrat on the ticket because a lot of my personal beliefs are platforms that the Democrats support. Right. Um, I have voted both ways in the past, as was brought up when I first pulled my petition. That's how it should be. Um, but the biggest failure we have is we act like the government can solve all the problems when really what we need is private employers to pay a decent wage so that we'll have less of this. Now, how we get there? Right. Because I'm, it's a, difficult. I'm a small business owner. I'm and a I have, small business. Owner. I have a handful of employees, and yes. you know, and uh, my partner's dad is, uh, in, he's an old union guy. He's super funny, um, <laughs> and so I'll argue with him about unions to the death. Um, and I think I, I, I see historically where there is a need, and I, I'm, I'm a little less safety issues. Right, I'm a little less friendly to where they sit now because I think just like a just like a government body, it kind of swells out of control, and it's no longer doing what it's supposed to do. You know, because one of his—he has a great story. I won't go into it. It's such a good story. I'll save it for later. Um, but uh, you know, is that they—they they swell out of control and then they become like this—you know, you know, self-feeding machine, and it eventually kills the business that employed all the people. Then now the union goes away because the people don't have jobs because they killed the business in the process. And so, I generally am not a big union fan. Um, that's not important to, per se, but. Um, you know, Jane was talking about when she was in here, the living wage conversation. Mm-hmm. It's been a thing that's going around. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I've 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 done the math personally on what it would do to us if they went to a $15 an hour minimum wage, which is maybe not ridiculous, but it's not. I don't know that it fixes the problems anyway. That's part mm-hmm. of my, my catch on it. It's like, even if I could, mm-hmm. um, even if I could do it without raising prices, I mean, that's essentially just taking that money out of my pocket. And I work a day job so that I can employ the four people. I could fire all four people, and me and my partner could work and cover all those hours and be fine. But I like the guys that work for us. I want to take care of them. But there's, it's not an infinite. No, I just don't have a wallet that I can throw out there, and it goes. And that's why I don't think there can be a flat uh, living wage. You can't say everyone in Tennessee, every employer in Tennessee has to pay $15. Right. Because that's saying Amazon, who could afford to pay 15 Walmart, who could afford to pay 15 you have to pay 15 Virginia Couch, who has nine employees, I can't afford to pay 15 Right. So there has to be some way to adapt to both the city, the area, the community, because $15 in Nashville is different than $15 sure. in Knoxville. I, I complain to death. There's a lot of stuff about the CARES Act that I hated, yes. um, but... Twelve hundred dollars here in Knoxville. Yes, goes goes a little ways. Where if you're in California, New York, twelve hundred dollars, you sneezed and it's mm-hmm. gone. And so I, I mean, definitely. Again, one of the things in libertarianism is it's the centralization that's part of the problem. Mm-hmm. Um, and being more locally focused. And I think one of the things that would help with that is I think the total amount I pay in taxes isn't the problem. It's where the total amount of my taxes Absolutely. go. Absolutely, um, I that. would love to see less money going to fighter jets and. Um, federal senators and and all their salaries and all the ridiculousness that goes on in dc i don't want to give them any more money than they need yes and again just like i was saying with the unions it's a it's a it's an entity that is swelled out of its own good and eventually it's going to kill the business or kill the worker and whichever one we want to apply i'm the worker in this conversation and they're going to kill my job for me um which is one of the reasons i've started pushing more focus personally on what's going on locally because they're the ones that should help me actually swing the stick to fight back right um as far as you know um you know go back to doing your real job federal government you know make sure it's easy for us to move about the country and stuff like that and keep people from coming over here and killing us (laughs) after that just go away just 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 shut up and quit costing so much money and i'm and i'm a happy camper but that's just me and so um so the schools are a big thing um obviously obviously everybody's talking budget right now with the pandemic going on um it's uh, everybody it's 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 obviously a question of you know and maybe this is a true binary in the or a combination of is it raise taxes or cut spending or the combination of the two everybody always says the combination of the two because it has to be correct um you know and it and some of the questions are so generic and I hate asking them, but I mean, I think I feel like I need to for my job to, right now is to say, you know, as far as you can see, because you're not there yet, um, 
what are some things that you see that can we can start looking at budget wise to either trim the fat or if we are raising taxes how are we going to do it well i think of course we don't know how bad this is going to get we're all hopeful right, we're still right yeah we're in the middle of it um sadly but we have to do whatever it takes to keep as many businesses in business as possible and if it means raising taxes then i think we need to raise taxes now it's not property taxes hey, oh, it's not me. the dog jumped in <laughs> <laughs> hi rowdy um we need to figure out a way to generate some revenue right um it's not sales tax because i believe sales tax only it hurts mostly the the lowest income. I mean, it's a huge portion of what um, they spend for uh, groceries and goods. Um, so we need a different way to do it. Okay, because I mean that's one of the things to me is like I um, I was talking to a friend of mine in North Carolina and they have a five percent income tax on top of a five percent sales tax on top of whatever their bracket of federal taxing is. Um, you know, I mean, I would i don't i don't know what it is i don't know what the answer is obviously or i'd be in your seat instead of in mine um or at least i'd be trying to be in your seat um i don't understand um i just i I don't know the solution here i mean i i I acknowledge and again as a libertarian as a lifelong republican prior to my libertarianism i don't want to give any more money than i Mm -hmm. have to um but i think one of the big things that keeps me in that spot is historically i have not seen the value for the money spent sure. and that's one of the things that's like you want to you want to take more take more but, but i want to see where it's i, I want to see it right mm-hmm. you know i mean i can't walk down the street uh, or i can't ride my my skateboard down the street because it's too bumpy mm-hmm. so well, what am i paying for you know these are the things we're paying for and this is part of the premise of the show to be is there's right. you know whose fault is it like right. who do i go to who do i scream at you know i'm i'm a county resident by the fence that you can see out the window right now that's the city on the other side of that fence the street you pulled up on halfway down the street it, it, it cuts off and i did that on purpose but you know there's you know like we joked about on the intro it's like is it district 18 or 15 right. and you know and then i got my state senate which is six and then i got my district four in county commissioner seat and trying to keep all these things in front of me and who's in charge of what and who i need to go to when i have an issue with the thing is it's part of the problem I'm, I'm really hopeful that we can get an election commissioner on here in the future right now is not a good time uh, and i respect that <laughs> you know i want to get an election commissioner in because i want to talk about that kind of stuff sure. and and i want to figure out who again of that crazy list of people who do i talk to about fixing the problems that they do because i assume that they just have a job and they you know do the job i don't know how much they get to adjust what's in front of them um we've been talking about gerrymandering all day today i don't know how oh, yeah. it came up and and it's gross it's one of those ugly things mm-hmm. you know um i've said it to everybody today is like if you put Tom. if you put term limits gerrymandering and um reduce pay for especially federal um election elected officials if you put those three things on a ballot it's going to pass every time with flying colors i disagree with one of them but that's because as a libertarian i put the onus on me to elect right it's my job to remove them right it's my job to put you in there it's my job to Mm -hmm. get you out when you're not doing it right and that onus goes to everybody to the populace as a whole i think we fail as a constituency to hold them accountable because the easiest way to hold them accountable is, is to, to vote for them. somebody else, mm-hmm. which makes someone like you fantastic because now there's an option to, to vote set, said person out because it's always been that same person for the last however many elections. Um, so um, so talk a little bit. I'm, I'm trying to see if there's any specific points I wanted to get on before we go fully crazy and talk about whatever. Um, um, tax incentive for business coming in. You have to be really careful about it. I, um, when I worked in manufacturing, I worked out at Forks of the River for Panasonic. So it was a manufacturing for plant. For you kids out there, <laughs> they used to make electronics, VCRs. <laughs> VCR is like a DVD player or a Blu-ray player, but it has a piece of tape in it, and it has a, uh, a, a, it's a magnetic tape that, that shows video and audio at the same time. It, uh, that that facility actually made electrolytic capacitors that went in those pieces of equipment you were See, talking I'm, about. I'm making jokes that I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but actually, I mean, it is funny. It's ir- The reason I'm not there is that that plant is not there anymore. But that plant, when it shut, it, it eventually closed. I know it was open for almost 20-something years, bought out by someone else. The state gave another company a huge amount of money to come in and manufacture another product. 
and anybody can look it up and see what it was but i'm not going to say anything directly about it but are they they still there they are not still there okay they got lots of money to come over and hire a large number of people and they never did Mm -hmm. and they still got the money and it went back overseas right so you know the tax incentives don't work if you don't put restrictions on them because one of my big things i always argue about it's like it's like if the government is the customer mm -hmm. it's the incentive program it's their incentive that's that it's like as a business person i very rarely will blame a business for bad action yes because if you incentivize them to act poorly they're going to act poorly Mm -hmm. and if you as a government are the one doing that then you're the bad you're the bad guy here if you gave them the guidelines and they followed the guidelines you can't right. complain exactly and so that's again you know same thing I, I, I put much more onus on different places where it normally puts everybody blames the big business all mm-hmm. the time and and it, that's one of those like i get really sensitive to that people start mm-hmm. blaming business and stuff it's like i'm one of those people and i'm not what you're describing and you it, gave me the guidelines i follow the rules right it, it really it, it actually like it truly hurts mm-hmm. my feelings when people are like all oh, business or evil and blah 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 it's like you're talking to me and you're telling me it's, to my face that you think i'm an evil person and it's the paycheck pr- protection program Right. It is the perfect example of it. They set of put out a bunch of rules. People right. followed them, and right. then everybody condemned them for following them. Right. Can't blame them for going for the money. Right. It was free money. Right. So and, and it's it's a, a horrible. Pro- it was it's a mess. not a not a good design. Right. Program. And we yeah, it's a mess. We've been messing. We we took part in it. Oh, and, we took part. And we every did every th- three weeks, I get an email from our accountant, and be like, "Well, they changed the thing, so this is <laughs> happening this day and this day." And it's like, yeah. Are they is the intent to make it so painful to figure out what you're doing that we forget about it and then all of a sudden I actually do have to pay it back? Mm-hmm. Um, I think the intent is their their goal is to have a large number of businesses not have to do anything to comply and then the banks don't have to do anything. Right. So yeah, it's a, uh, yeah, I think that's the goal is to make make the the banks made their their money off of it and now they don't really have to do any back checking on yeah, it yeah i mean so. yeah there's a ugh, i don't want to start on the cares act i don't <laughs> want to start I know, on the cares it's act. terrible well it's just I, like it was bad it's all over horrible. i mean that's horrible uh, it, i was i was grateful as a business it allowed me to um pay rent pay utilities right. pay employees uh hopefully the amount that i borrowed will be forgiven right um it's a wonderful in that sense right. it was a very poorly planned and right. executed program right because like one of the guys on the show we were arguing about that specifically and he's like well because as a libertarian i'm like get the get the guidelines out of the way get all this bureaucratic i don't like this, this red tape stuff and he's like isn't that a good example of why we read red yeah. tape it's like no we don't need this stupid thing in the first place exactly. you know i mean it was it was it was you know we already said the 1200 dollars part didn't make sense yeah. for some places and made perfect sense for other places um i mean they're giving our own money back to us and asking us to thank them for it well they're um, giving some people their money back right and then there's right and then they're talking about round two or three or whatever yeah. coming up and I'm, I'm 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 baffled by it it's like i get it there are people in need there are specific subsets of people in need and i understand and we're that- not giving to them we are giving to everyone right. and I, I was in a furniture store this weekend and their their delivery times are 10 12 16 weeks why because people have money people have money right now the other people who need the money don't have it and the nurses and emts and everything that had to work through all that Right. don't have time to spend it right um but yeah I it mean, is I, what it is like and it's weird because like I, I i've said this to a bunch of people it's like i'm jealous of having a job <laughs> I'm, I'm 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 upset i'm disappointed that i didn't get laid off yeah you know i could have been making more money at home doing more of these stupid podcasts for everybody than building a new business uh, right you know and getting paid for it you know yeah. i mean my business partner got laid off on the front end of it and he's out running around doing crazy stuff and like part of me is freaking out because i think he's taking it all from the store because he's spending all this money and then i think about it and i realize that you know he had i can't remember how many he got the 1200 for plus the kids um you know and then he pulled his 401k with permission because there's that pass there's no penalty, there's no penalty pass on there and i gotta mm-hmm. figure out if i could still do that i think that just went out yesterday dang it um you know and he pulled some of his 401k to without penalty and then he was getting the unemployment on top of that and like it's just it, there was no there was just here to throw money at people and it's That's, like i can't figure out what the the government said oh my gosh we're getting ready to crash let's throw as much money as we can at it without any true thought right and but the thing and is it didn't it, like the the that that little bit the pen the the, uh-huh. the the parts that we're talking about that are so stupid or were what 
a third a percentage <laughs> right a third of the total you know i've argued to death about how stupid bailing out the airlines was right. um i don't get it and this is a free market thought process and i don't think it's that weird and that it bezos or uh, musk or somebody will go buy all those planes when delta goes out and they'll start a new airline and we'll be fine yeah. and our prices may not drop down to our 59 flights to vegas all the Which time is, but that's the market. they're not going to be 200 and something dollars in, in a year anyway once we get back to flying things will go back to theoretically normal whether we bail out these airlines or not same thing we did with the banks and we're kind of indirectly doing it with the banks again and then the fed and their stupid zero percent which means the banks can make money loaning stuff to me and i'm all excited because i'm only paying three percent but the bank is making three percent off of nothing and then yeah. they get insured behind that so that if i do default on it they still get their money right and it's like at what point is it clear to everybody that these people don't work for us anymore yeah. Um, and that's what drives me nuts. I don't know how we got that far down that road. No, it, I, I agree. <laughs> and it's it's one reason I wanted to run was I just felt like I, even at the state level, am not being representative. Right. There are not people like me out there making decisions. They are palling up with the biggest companies and making decisions without thinking about everybody down the line. And I just think we need... So I disagree a little bit there because there's thought. It's just... <laughs> the lack of care maybe yes um yes oh this is going to kill people Just, uh, whatever. okay whatever slush another 50 million over yeah. here we'll be fine yeah um yeah and so i don't know that's one of those that just drives me nuts i don't know how to do it i don't know how to fix it um other than to do the best i can to illustrate it and make more people aware um i think i think there's need and again i, I challenge you like i've tried to challenge everybody else if there is a way that your position can start to do some real work on simplifying the system for us voters mm -hmm. making it you know like everybody always talks about like voter suppression in the sense that they close places early and stuff like that which is a problem but it's just too hard but right when it when like literally like you're actually in studio and so i could show you this the ballot 15 pages yes. is my sample ballot yes i'm technically registered a republican mm -hmm. so i don't even have you on it <laughs> which it wouldn't matter you're not running against anybody right. but you know um my partner and I, we're both lawyers, and we're looking at the ballot, and we're having to go up onto this the Knox County's geographical website to remember which right, districts right, we're the in. Right, the KGIS thing. Yeah, yeah. And, and we and, and I put a post on that. I was like, hey, guys, check we're it out. Apparently, though, the um, one of the guys on the show had updated his registration, and the new registration cards have it printed on it on what your polling location is, what oh, your districts are for the different offices. Very helpful. So that is super helpful. Um, but yeah, not like I, it's one of those, uh, when I was talking to Jesse at, at Compass, I was like, he, he's like, yeah, I think that's, that should be a more easily available mm -hmm. thing that you can go and like, it would be super nice if I could get my ballot exactly as it's going to look when I go in When there. I go in. Right. Because, you know, I look it at this. It shows every other district, right. every other. Right. It, this gives every other district everything mm -hmm. that's on there, which is better than nothing. Right. But, you know, I don't, it shouldn't be that hard to take that next step because that ballot exists already somewhere because that's what's going to be in the that's box when I go there <laughs> right that's what's going to be in the box when I go there so it shouldn't be that hard to, to make that next or at stuff. least be it on the website to be pulled right. up and I'd love to see something um, I've talked about this a couple different times I'd love to see something where the the districts one gerrymandering is a huge problem um, where the districts are more like school districts drawn mm -hmm. where it's a little bit more simple geographically and it'd be like you know I'm do I'm zoned for West High School my kids go to Rocky Hill Elementary right now and so be like well my house district is West and Bearden High School districts the way those things load in because it's a it's a makes it's, no sense. that makes no sense no as far as just getting the geography together yeah to where they would all be the same because i mean like 50 feet that way turns into beard and high school district yeah. um and then farragut district but, but you gotta say as far as like you know if because district 18 is uh like the kingston pike corridor yes. all the way down through here in west knoxville and it goes up towards uh north because right. the little carnes is good in the carnes i don't remember a, a little bit on the edge and right. then it's switches you to know a and so district. um whether it be hardin valley or something like that i'm not i'm not exactly to what we have now mm -hmm. but something where you know a lot of these things overlap because they do you know because you know this i was learning from the guy the 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 same earlier today in the state senate district six seat is like 
south of 40 all of knox county yeah you know and it's like i didn't know it went that far east which he would he and i in, in talking about it, it kind of sounds like they did a little tweaking to try to make that that way um and that just doesn't make sense to me because you know it's it's supposed to be representing blocks of people in in a place not in portions of a place and then a reared hook that goes around and like i joke earlier i'm i'm in the city or i'm in the county by five feet there's one house down the street that's in the city somehow um just all sorts of weird stuff like that so some sort of you know, there, there, there's a little more blocking there um, to make it a little simpler for us to know who sure. we're who, like, you know, it'd be cool. Cause then, cause then again, if we had it like based around the high schools, we could have where um, there are meetings where you can, you can come and you can have some of the other seats that are in that same area mm-hmm. all come to, it, it, to one place and, you know, third Friday or whatever it is, we all go hang out and there's an access point where everybody is and it's centralized to everybody because sure. the school is built that way specifically. That's just my idea. I don't know. No. But if it's in your purview, I'd like to see something like that get pushed a little further. But I understand at the same time that you're voting against yourself on some levels, not you personally, but right. some of these seats are because they're never going to vote balanced. for a paid decrease and you know, kind of sure. stuff like that. But that's something that I get excited about. Um, what else? What's, what's big for you? What is something that you want to see other stuff like other things that you find is a specific issue that you think that needs changed or that needs to be brought up to be discussed um that's not happening now well some of the one of the points i'm running on is as a small business owner i am a lawyer so i have an advantage of being able to work through some of the difficult things about starting a business that helped me a lot when i got going i know how to i was able to work through the unemployment issues when i needed to do a mass layoff two months ago three months ago and yet keep them quote employed right. for a few hours a week i can work through that it is too complicated for the average business owner okay so we have to have fewer rules and better rules all right um and there's annoying little things like if you want if you are a corporation and you get sued or you want to sue someone, you can't go to court and represent yourself. Even if it's just you and two other people in your corporation, you have to actually pay me, engage a lawyer right. to go represent you. Doesn't make sense. Right. If you're a small corporation, obviously we need it where there's multiple shareholders and public companies, but there are states that allow corporations to represent, be represented by their shareholder. Their major shareholder. Right. Especially so, if your corporation is, is lawyers you. doing lawyer stuff and you can't well, we hire can. yourself. We can. We oh, can we represent can. ourselves because we're licensed attorneys. Oh, okay. So we can represent, the the business can hire us to represent ourselves. And that's what I do for the trust company. I'm an attorney for the trust company. Um, so I can represent them. But a normal business owner is going to say they were collecting a debt. Right. They have to hire an attorney right. to go collect that debt. Right. An expensive endeavor. So there's there's small laws that could be passed to right. make it easier for the average business owner. Or some laws that could be Or removed. undone. Right. Yeah, because I mean, that's one of the things that I complain about a lot in conversation with my business partner. It's just like I get I get something from the city, the county, the state, or the federal government every week in the mailbox. And it's just like, did we do this thing already? I don't know what is this. Mm-hmm. What is this thing? What, where did this thing come from? What, like, you know, like the IRS mostly, they like to change my address all the time. We've corrected your address, and it's the same address as it was. Like it's a before and after. It's the same address. But is it DR instead of drive or something? No, it's like, like it's like identical. That? I don't know if they're. I don't know if the. I don't know if the post office is changing there. Like, um, you know, because you don't have the five digit zip, and then you have the adjusted one. I don't know if the adjusted one changed because I don't pay that close attention. But it's like, you know, whether it's like Suite One Hundred Eight or whatever, they just keep like we get all these random mailers about like changes to our account, and it's like, well, I didn't approve that. And I don't even know what the change actually is. And it's like, this is stuff all the time. And it's like, I didn't get into this to do paperwork. I got into this to sell the product that I sell. I got in this to go find more product and new things that are exciting and that people are into that are going to sell for me. That's what I got to do. I got in this to talk to people because apparently I like doing that. Um, And I'm busy combing through pages of, and then I go and hire a lawyer and pay 200 and something dollars an hour for some simple like, Form, uh, a form to get right hey out. what does this say because you know because when you when you mess it up it's real bad mm-hmm. um and you get in a whole lot of trouble and so i'm down with that anything we can do to take a piece of paper out of my mailbox <laughs> at the shop would be fabulous to me um well we it, do it's it's a barrier to the to the market it right. really is for a lot of people they they can't navigate right that system right. i mean we've i mean we have a third-party accounting firm same thing and it's just like it's so it, it's 
it's not that big a deal until it is. It's exactly. And then when it is, it's a big problem. Um, I, I, as a lawyer, when I would first sit down with uh, clients that were wanting to start a business, the first thing I would say is, who have you engaged as your accountant? Right. Because you cannot navigate that system. Right. You cannot navigate payroll taxes and uh, the business taxes and sales taxes right. without an accountant. Yeah, and then get it it's all shipped and, set and no. sealed up and, and packed off. And the, the right and people... electronic filing, if you're a certain size, it's right. too complicated. Right. I agree with that. And um, anything to fix that is good. Because, I mean, you know, you get people that are, you know, um, one of the things that um, Sam Brown was talking on here is, is uh, community engagement, getting new small businesses up and running. What can we do to help them, whether it's financially, uh, whether the location, whatever it is, the grants, all this different stuff to get new people engaged in business that weren't before that's a huge hurdle for Absolutely. most people you know it's like okay well i could be a barber it's my last name anyway but i could be a barber and i can go out and i can I, and i can cut hair how do i get the, licensed the libertarian hates the idea of having to get a license for it anyway but mm-hmm. that's a separate conversation but you know all right so i've got my barber's license i got like because i looked into it not that i wanted to actually do it but um there's a little place up the street here that closed down it's like that'd be a cool place for a little neighborhood barber shop i'll have to hire barbers in Knox County, I'm sorry, city of Knoxville, you have to have a master barber, which is a separate license, on every second you're open. And so I have to at least hire two master barbers if I'm going to run any hours that make any sense, plus everybody else that's licensed. It's like, okay, never mind. I'm done. I quit. You know, <laughs> which the, is right there. Barrier the, to entry. Right, the right rent, there. The rent was good. The, the salary of one and then a couple of standard barbers makes sense to me. It's like, I could go get the license and not actually cut hair, but like it was just so weird to me that like you know it's the same thing with alcohol we do alcohol at our business i have to have somebody who went through a five-hour class once a year to be listed on the on the permit at all times that the place is open and it's like i got i get a guy that gets sick that normally runs the show that normally runs the shop and he takes the night off and all of a sudden i'm breaking a law and i could lose my beer permit for it and it's like that's so it's just it's it's just it's punitive for no good reason Mm -hmm. like who does that protect it's not saving anybody Mm -hmm. um plus it makes it harder to do the job and more expensive and x y and z so those are you're you're preaching to the right choir on some of these things all right so simplified legal business aspect making it easier for businesses to do what they want to do instead of being buried in paperwork absolutely win what's next um women's rights okay um i it's very frustrating to me that um, in 2020, I'm fighting a battle that I thought was won decades ago. Right. And so, I, it's, it's religious beliefs aside, it is a constitutional right. Our Supreme Court decided that. Right. And we are revisiting that through... Uh, attempted executive gains. orders. Right. Little, yes. Little state games. And it's, and it's for no reason. It's not about... Um, making it safe or healthy for women. It's not about that. It's, it's not even about, necessarily about stopping it because you can just go down to Georgia or, or anywhere it else. It is about pandering to a voter group. Right. And that is what frustrates right. me about it. So that's the, here's another challenge. You need to put, we need to have a law in the books. I don't know how you write it. You're the lawyer. Um, that essentially says that if, if um, one, uh, some way to get rid of earmarks, that's a separate thing. Um, but that if a, if, if you want to pass a law that is not executable, then I don't know if it, that's dereliction of duty and you're fired. I don't know how the what the punishment needs to be for it. But the, the, this example <laughs> being one, anymore. this example being one, um, you know, there's a lot of little, there's a lot of ones out there that it's like you write it and you put it in and it sounds cool. But then you think about it for half a second. It's like you cannot process that law. Right. You, you're not going to do it. It's not going to happen whether... Um, you know, like the, the mass mandate thing, it's a little bit different. It's a little bit more hot button right now for sure. But at the same time, realistically, you're never, you can't, you, it's not enforceable, right? You're never going to enforce that law mm-hmm. realistically. Mm-hmm. And then you're getting into stupid things where some guy's going to get the fine or get the jail time and he's, or you're going to get an employee hurt or yelled at or right. And, and, to... and this guy's going to get the fine and he's going to go fight it in court and be like, well, what about that guy? Mm-hmm. And he's going to have a thousand examples that he can point to where it didn't happen. And mm-hmm. if you can't do it and you can't do it all the way, don't do it. Right. Don't know how we get that on the books, but that needs to be a thing at all levels of government. I'm, I mean, you're yeah. get you're you're selling. I'm 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 buying right now, yes. so I'm 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 telling you what I need to buy, um, and so that the, I get, those are those are things to me that I think a lot of people agree on, and Absolutely. I say it all the time on the show. I don't think I'm special, other than I'm dumb enough to do it. I'm dumb enough to do this podcast because I don't know any better, 
but I don't think I'm special. I don't think my thought process is that unique that I have some unique voice I'm, I'm throwing out there. I think realistically I'm way average and I'm one of a lot of people that don't hear myself. Well, and that's, that, that's me when I was deciding to run is right. I'm an average person. I have never cared about politics at all. I've never wanted to run for office, but to sit back and watch what has been happening, right. especially the last two years in Tennessee is just frustrating. Right. It's frustrating that it is not meant to improve any lives for Tennesseans. Right. It is meant to, to, Ignite a certain base. Right, it's a pull. Right, that's it, the sole right. reason it's for a, it's for to the, get base hot and active, absolutely. so that so that not only uh, the Haggerty or who the Manny Sethier or whichever one's on wins that gajillion person primary um, gets more active voters for them, absolutely. but Trump gets more active voters for him and stuff like that too. And I mean, again, like we've been joking about all the time, like if I were running right now, if I were running as a Republican, which I probably since I have the history for it, I could probably do it. If I were running as a Republican right now, if you say Trump near me, I'd be like, nope. <laughs> I'm I'll, I'll, at best I'm just avoiding the question, um, but if you put me on the spot and I have to answer, it's like no, I, I no, it's 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 you know I, like I said I get the joy of being I didn't vote for either of them they both sucked and I'm tired of this suck, <laughs> this is I'm over it and that's part of the reason why I, I identify as libertarian I want to see more candidates pushing issues and making I mean even making the Trumps and the Hillarys more responsible to who they're mm-hmm. supposed to be. You know, you get up there on that platform and you say what you're going to say. Okay, cool. You better do it because now it's not just one; it's two or three that are going to keep you in check. Right. That is not what's happening right now. All that ha- matters right now is as long as it's not blue, or as long as it's not red. Yeah. That's all that matters. And and I, as a voter, am over it. And I'm hoping I can be a part of changing that. And I, I do talk about a lot about um, voting blue right now in Tennessee. And the reason I talk about it is because we do have a Republican supermajority we don't have a seat at the table the only way in my opinion you can get good work done is when you have even playing fields as a business attorney if i have two clients you know a client on the other side and then my client and they're evenly weighted right we're going to get a good deal neither one of us is going to be 100 percent happy right but it's going to be a good deal and we're going to all go on and be happy right now we have a situation where the weak party gets no say whatsoever, the strong party goes and makes whatever law they want. And so it's not a good deal for anybody. Right. We need even people having legitimate discussions, not screaming matches, right. but discussions. I get excited um, about it sometimes, I'll admit it. But. Oh, I do too. <laughs> and I try to do that not in public. Uh, I do it. Um, poor Brian suffers through some of my <laughs> screams. But, um, but I, I feel like if we had a more uh, evenly balanced house, right. we could have better laws made. Right. I dis. I mean, I, I agree and disagree on some levels. Um, I think the transparency is a thing, and I think by having a more level playing field, we will get more transparency. Um, I don't necessarily agree that that's the way I want to get the more transparency, but I think transparency is the number one. Um, I, I like. I get the joy of saying I don't care. I don't care what party you're at because I don't have a candidate. I, I, I it, it'll be years before we do. I'm hoping that it becomes a thing. I'm hoping third parties become more real. I hate, hate, hate that Knox County Election Commission in the state of Tennessee does not uh, acknowledge any third parties. Mm-hmm. It's it's red, blue, or independent. It's red, yeah. blue, or gray. Gray so boring and sad. They do it on purpose. <laughs> Um, you know, and then I don't like this is my sample that I have in front of me. Since I am technically registered a Republican, I could do the Republican primaries. But if I'm an independent, I get zero primary input. Right. So it doesn't matter who I want. It doesn't matter which candidate on which side I want. And I understand some of the logic and why they do it that way and stuff like that. But I want the best person for the job. Mm-hmm. And if I get to, if I get the ability to push. Uh, like a Tulsi Gabbard instead of a Bernie or, or a Biden um, because I can vote in that primary if I get to push a, I don't know anybody uh, I got nothing on the, I'm going back into the 2016 um, <laughs> I, I want to say Jed Bush just because that's the name that's coming up but I hate the Bush family's <laughs> dynasty Dom's, thing I'm not a big yes. dynasty guy so, I'm a terrible, so uh, Ted Cruz dynasties. or whatever it doesn't matter but if I get if, if on that list of five or six I get to put the two that I like best that then go match up and that's the reality of what gets to heaven we win and that's what's important to me um and so i have problems with that that's some of the stuff i want to get on the election Mm -hmm. commission about um i don't know um we've been through a couple is there anything else specific that you want to get out and do talk about no i i'll encourage everyone to um okay here's my here's my trick question this is my trick question it's my trap question don't answer it and tell me to shut up if you don't like it (laughs) 
Who would you prefer to run against? I really don't have a preference. They both Good are. Error. They no. They both have um, strong. I mean, strong base. They both have. Um, good things to run against. I, I, I mean, I, I very good, good answer. Okay, she I is have, a lawyer. She told us no, she was a lawyer from I the have, beginning. I have good and bad for both. Okay. I, our, our campaign has. Uh, they've grilled me. They've said, "Who do you want?" And I'm like, I don't know. I, I'll take. I'm going to take either one of them. Right. I'm ready. See, all um, right. So I'm. I'm going to for zero professionalism right here, but I'm going to give you advice to be like, whichever one you think is better is the answer because I want to beat whichever one's better. It's the it's the Michael Jordan uh, answer. Yeah. But, but I think they're both good. I think they're both. Right, but you don't say which one. You just you just answer whichever one oh, you think is better. <laughs> because it's the Michael Jordan answer. Yeah. I'm not a champion if I don't beat the champion. Yeah. You know, I've got to beat the best to be the best. And so that's that's the. But I think they're both. I think they're both. I think they're both. Interesting. I think. I, and I think especially they, they with a very different issue. Right. And with the vacated seat and the way that's all shaken mm-hmm. down, I think, you know, this this specific, you know, uh, election in the broader terms. Um, not just that primary, but then when you come in, I think it's it's going to be an interesting one. I think it's got um, it's got potential to break the rules of what it's always been, um, and not we for so. not for any of the candidates involved. I mean, I think you know, I think if eh, in my opinion, in my understanding of what's going on, I think if you want it to stay exactly how it was, the closest you're going to get is Gina. Um, I think uh, I think uh, Eddie Manis is a little bit more centered. Um, my concern with Eddie personally is that I think like all he, I think he really wants to be the mayor of the city of Knoxville. I think he does, too. Um, and that this is a this is his his backup school, for lack of a better word. Um, I don't. I've not to say he couldn't a, do the job, read but something where somebody wrote it would be a good consolation prize for him not winning, and I I, I think that's sad. Right, and I, but I, I I but in talking to him though too, I think it's really I think he has a, he has a passion to do what he can. Um, for his community, and he has a preference of the city of Knoxville. And that's um, what that's what I want people to focus on. I don't want them to ever think that a house seat is a consolation prize, right? Because right, and I think he is. Can, I think I, 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 and, and this is not to try to cover my, my my basis here, but I think realistically, I think he wants to do well. He wants to do good things for Knoxville, Knox County. Um, but he really wants to be the mayor. I think that's how that's how it feels to me. I might be wrong, Eddie. I'm sorry. Don't yell at me. I'm still trying to get my friend's dad to go on honorary next time you get it up, and I want your help doing so. Um, you know, and I, and then again, I think you know, as far as what I'm getting out of you talking now, as far as that standard block Democrat of old, that you're not you don't fit in that block correctly either. I think you you step across the the aisle, for lack of a better word, on a well, number of I- issues because mo- every Democrat I've talked to so far, when they when I say how do you help small business, cutting paperwork is never one of them that anybody answers. Yeah, well, <laughs> but well, most of them have never been business. I sort of so. say if you've been a bit, and and honestly, when I announced that I was running, I had former clients calling me and going, "Uh, I didn't even know you were a Democrat." I mean, it's right. just, it's not part of my. I see. I, I like that. That was one of the things yeah. with Eddie because Eddie's been fighting that yeah. whole everybody. He's not a Republican enough mm-hmm. thing. He's been fighting that thing the whole time, and that sells to me. Yeah. I don't care if the party doesn't like you. That's a plus in my book right. because the party's part of the problem to me. And if that goes the same way for you on the other side, then it's going to be exciting. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I don't know. This is just me um, getting way deeper than I think I meant to. Um, and like I'm, I'm like I've got to go. I got to go to work tomorrow, and then I got to work on Wednesday, and then I'm going to go vote on Thursday. And I'm excited. Like, I'm excited to go vote. I wish more voters would be that um, way. I'm excited to go vote. I'm excited to get home. I'm excited to watch the news and see who's winning. And be like, hey, I met that person. Talk to them. Ooh, that's gross. You know, and just go down the list and see all the different things that are happening. Um, I wish that we would have started sooner. I wish we would have gotten into the idea sooner. Um, you know, this whole law director thing going on right now oh, is very a very interesting, interesting conversation. Very. And I don't know anything about any of them. Yeah. Um, and so I've got some personal research to do that I'm not going to be able to share with our well, I'm just glad somebody's listenership. out there trying to educate the voters. It's really hard. Well, don't I don't start your process with me and then go do some better research that, that we can't do because we, you know, I, and again, it's it's you know what I'm never going to do. I'll I'll state who I'm going to vote for. I'm not going to do that now. But if it's in conversation and somebody asks, I'll answer that question mm-hmm. for me. But I'm never going to tell anybody who to vote for. Um, you know, because one of the things as a libertarian that drives me nuts, I got Joe Jorgensen out running right now. Nobody knows who she is or how she exists or any of those things. But as soon as you say she's a libertarian, they go, well, you're throwing away your vote. And it's like, I don't care. 
my stance is I'm going to throw it away until somebody figures out how to pick it up because I'm not the only one. We as a populace are tired of the system and the way it's going, and we need to do better. Um, and hopefully we can be at least get the transparency out and get Knoxville to, uh, and get it easier for us, the citizenry, to understand what's going on because then we know what to hold you accountable for because I think that's what we lose. So I've rambled. Um, and I want you to take a couple minutes, go down your contacts list, how people can get a hold of you, um, how they can learn more about you, and then we'll do the outro. Uh, you can visit my website, votevirginiacouch.com. It's got an uh, email address on there. You can send me an email address or an email at virginia at votevirginiacouch.com. You can call me on my cell phone, 865 719 Cool. All right, everybody. That is Virginia Couch, District 18, House of Reps for the state of Tennessee. Um, That finishes Chapter 1 of this one. We'll come back and have her back, and then whether it's Gina or Eddie, we'll get them on and uh, do a compare and contrast because we've got a couple months to make that decision. But for Eddie and Gina, if if you're registered Republican, that's Thursday, and there's a whole, whole bunch of serious, serious, Um, general election stuff for Knox County going on Thursday. So if you have any questions, uh, find some answers and I'll go through the outro. Like I said, if you have any questions um, that we can answer, uh, almostinagreement at gmail.com or almostinagreement on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, any podcast provider you can think of, we're on there. If we're not, email us and let us know because we want to be on there and we'll have to fix that. Um, I've had a super awesome day today. I've been through four great dare candidates for all their different districts and all the different stuff. Um, and I'm exhausted. And I get to go back and get right back on Zoom and have a conversation about Cub Scouts after this. But we can't thank you guys enough for listening. We can't thank you guys enough for taking the time to, to better educate yourself, to be a better voter. We as citizens need to do better. Um, and we need to hold these people accountable. And I intend to be a voice for that. And if you need me to help, let us know. Almost in agreement, almost in agreement at gmail.com. Have a great day, everybody.